The following is a video on using the stat mode on a Casio scientific calculator uh, to calculate the, the mean, the standard deviation, the median, and the interquartile range. Okay. Now, I'm going to be doing this on an FX100 AU Plus, um, but it's very similar to the FX82 um, AU Plus 2 and, and other related um, Casio calculators as well. Okay, The menu options might be ever so slightly different. Um, but it's basically the, the same basic idea in terms of using stat mode. So what we have, we have a table that uses class intervals. Okay, and I've just come up with some um, generic sort of random um, class intervals. So the abstract doesn't mean anything, um, but it could be, you know, it could be age groups, it could be whatever. Um, there's a frequency column here as well. So how often um, does this occur? So. First thing we need to work out though, before we even bother with stat mode and, and anything like that, we need to work out what the class center is. Now, when we talk about the calculation of the mean, um, we really mean the, the estimation. So maybe I might just clarify that. We're only estimating the mean. Okay. So when you say calculation, really, we're actually going to be estimating it. And the reason for that is because it's a class interval, we don't know exactly what the data is. We're only going to, we only got a sort of a, like a, like a midway point. So this is uh, zero to um, data that's under 12. So it could actually include 11.999, um, but it cannot include 12. However, to work out the class center, it's just the, the mean of, of these two numbers, the two, um, basically the endpoints of each interval. So 0 and 12, the midpoint of that's going to be 6. The midpoint of 12 and 24, um, it's going to be 18. Okay, so 24 and 36 will be 30. Uh, 36 and 48 will be 42. Uh, 42, so the next one along, so 48 and 60 will be 54. And 60 to 72 will be 66. Okay, so basically we're just going up by... Um, basically going up by 12s each time and we have our frequencies already filled out so what we'll do first let's put it into stat mode so hopefully you can see that okay okay we press uh, mode first okay and on the FX 100 AU plus it's mode 3 um, on the FX 82 I think it's mode 2 okay so just be careful there which mode to pick but it's, it's it'll say stat STAT then pick one var. Okay, now notice that there's no frequency column, so we need to add the frequency column back in. Okay, so shift setup. Okay, we scroll down and you'll see an STAT there, number four. Okay, frequency on and off, frequency on. Now you can see that the frequency column is there. Now what we'll do, uh, we'll enter in, we need to use now the class center as the, basically as, an, as, as a score. Okay, it's not the exact score, and we, we might not have gotten any sixes um, in the actual data, but it's the midpoint of the class interval, so that's what we need to use. That's all we have. So let's fill that out first. So 18, 30, 42, 54, and 66. Okay, moving along now to fill out the frequency column. Uh, 5, 12, 25, 18... 10 and 2. Okay, so we should have six rows there. If you need to review the data, you can scroll, sort of scroll around and, and just check and make sure that, that the data is as, as it should be, um, as it is in the table. So press the AC key. Now what we'll do is that let's estimate the mean. Okay, so shift 1. You use shift 1 a lot. Okay, so this is the um, stat menu. Um, so that brings up, you know, options there. Um, the two that were going to be of most value to us is this one here called VAR, V-A-R, and this one here called min max. So VAR is to do with the mean and the standard deviation. Min max is to do with the median and interquartile range. Okay, so in particular, um, Q1 and Q3, so the first quartile and the third quartile, uh, which we then use to calculate the interquartile range. The calculator won't do the IQR directly, but it will give you the quartiles, which obviously is just a matter of subtracting one from the other. So let's press four. So var, this one here, um, x bar, 
okay, is the, the mean of that data. So press two and we get 30 point, um, 30 point, we'll just round it to, to maybe we'll jump to one decimal place. So I might just write those answers here. So X bar, okay, is equal to, okay, 33.67 um, or just 33.7. Um, okay, so that's to one decimal place. Let's work out the standard deviation. And we're gonna treat this as a population. Okay, just be very careful. If the question says or mentions the word sample at all, or anything that implies that it's a it's a sample and it can't be argued with that it's actually a sample, then we need to use the sample standard deviation here, which is option four, which is the S. Um, if it's a population, um, we use option three, which is sigma. Okay. So we're just going to use option three. Um, there's no mention. There was no mention that this was a sample at all. So we can assume it to be. It would treat it as a population. Press three, and there's our standard deviation. Okay, or at least our estimate of the standard deviation of this data. So that's going to be uh, fourteen point two. Okay. Now let's work out the the median. Okay. So again, shift one. You get used to this. Shift one. Shift one all the time. Um, number six. Min max. Um, it's a very handy menu, this one. So you can see there, number four is the median. So why don't we do that? And so you see min, max, Q1, median, Q3. Okay, so press number four, median. Okay. Median equals 30. All right, and we might as well work out our Q1 and our Q3. And obviously the interquartile range then is just a matter of subtracting one from the other. So number six there, so Q1, press three. Okay, Q1 also is 30. Uh, so it is interesting that Q1 and the median are identical. That's possible, that can happen. And number five, Q3 is 42. Okay, so therefore, the interquartile range is the difference between Q3 and Q1. Okay, so that's 42, okay, minus 30, uh, which equals 12.